Greetings, dear viewers. This is Ex Anima, a game that I saw on Steam via the Steam Discovery queue, that little feature where they show you a queue of games that uh, Steam thinks you might be interested in. I saw this game there, I saw the store page, I was instantly sold on the game as soon as I saw it, and uh, I decided to try it out. So here I am trying out Ex Anima. Let me give you a little bit of backstory here. Uh, not really backstory, but a little bit of information here at this point. I got the game, I downloaded it, I installed it, I did the character select thing, I decided to play as a proctor who upholds the law. The, the general story is that there are abductions occurring between these two villages, Benston and Pern, and uh, for some reason, somehow, my proctor character finds himself uh, here investigating these, uh, these uh, kidnappings or abductions or whatever you want to call them. P people are disappearing, these kidnappings. So. There is that. Now what interests me about this game is that it's not your typical hack and slash move about the game, sort of click everywhere, do stuff kind of game. This game, everything involved, everything about this game is physics driven, including your character's movement. So my character, I can move him around with my with my right mouse button, sure, I can move around the inner, uh, the environment like this, and the further I move my cursor, the faster he'll move in that direction up to a point, you know, toward, toward his sprint speed. Oh, I just tripped! You see? Everything... <laughs> That was not intentional, I, I assure you. That was not intentional. <laughs> My character tripped over an object in the world, and that can happen. And now, I've taken just a little bit of time, like 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah, it's taken like half an hour for me to get this game's controls to a point where I feel comfortable enough to start recording. But uh, combat is something completely different. Like, if I click, I don't swing or anything like that. Actually, clicking does something else entirely. Let me find something that I can actually interact with. Everything in this game is physics-driven. I can pick up objects, and I can move them around, and I can use the W, A, S, and D keys to uh, set them in different areas and uh, do different things with this sort of thing. And I actually found a pike over here a second ago. Not long ago, like a little uh, metal spike. Here it is. Here's a little metal spike. I wonder if I can equip it now that I think about it. Oh, wait. Can I put it in here? No, I can't. But you can interact with things. Like I can set it on top of this box if I wanted to. Um, so yeah, there's that. I can move around this little box, too. I can move it and see what was inside. Oh, I actually found the metal pike underneath that little crate there. Let me pick this up. I can put that back in there. Rotate it and be like, blink. See, now it's in there. And if I move this, the pike doesn't come with it. <laughs> Good to know. So anyway, this game is in early access. I think this game is in early access. But it... Uh, it, it feels really good to play so far. I've only seen this one room, so I can't really say. Now, let's get let's get into the combat. I want to show you folks the combat. Now, I haven't actually fought anything. It's taken me half an hour to get the controls down. I haven't fought anything yet. But you press tab to go into combat mode. Now, your character will always look toward your cursor, and you can move around in that regard. Don't want, you don't want to trip over things while fighting. There's stuff on the ground. But if I click, my character simply raises his weapon. If you click and hold, your character will swing. Now, this is physics-based, okay? So if I'm moving, I can... I can increase the weight of my swing by um, by moving while swinging. There we go. See, that would have been a good hit up against an opponent. Uh, as for blocking and things like that, I can't really say that I have a good handle on that. But to block an attack, you would do something sort of like this, I guess. Like, you would move your sword in the, in the way of your opponent. And you can double-click to do an, an overhead you can double click and hold to do an overhead slash. But um, yeah, combat is going to be something that's going to be extremely interesting, I feel. But anyway, let me move on. Trip over this crate a little bit. Movement feels really weird. You're going to see me stumbling around a lot. The game starts off with a screen telling you that your first experience with the game is not representative of it, and I fully believe that that's true. Um, it tells you you're going to suck, and you're going to suck a lot because the game's controls are so different. But the developer's intent with this game is to create an all-new kind of RPG, and I like that idea. So anyway, let's, uh... Oh! <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't find that amusing, but I do. So there's two ways I can handle this situation. <laughs> Opening a door is a situation. There's two ways I can handle this. I can press S to backstep. There we go, and now I can open the door safely. Or I could have simply right-clicked, and my character would have moved that direction. But uh, W always moves your character forward, no matter which direction he's facing. So if I'm facing this way, W is going to move me forward. It's in relation to your character that all of your movements work. So that that's going to feel really strange to you at first, I guarantee, if you play this game. That's going to feel really strange at first. And to open this door, I'm clicking and dragging on it, so you can interact with the environment in this way. Okay, let's go through this door. I don't know what I I don't know what I 
can expect here, but you can rotate the camera and do all sorts of things. And uh, attention to detail is going to be very important in a game like this, or in this game in particular. You move these boards around, just, quick, just looking for loot and things like that, things that might help me out. Alright, so now we're actually getting moving. Sometimes the board becomes an icon of a board. I don't know why. But I can move them wherever I want to. The camera just shifted itself upward as I approached the wall. And I don't know if there's like a map or something that I can open up. I don't think so. So I'll have to try and be careful and not get too lost. I'm in this labyrinth here another door. There's something to fight. Let me pull back, press tab to enter combat mode. Now, I don't want to get hit by it, so I want to be the one to make the first strike, right? So we're going to go, Ugh! there we go. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. And, Ugh! there we go. I want to, ow, I want it to, Ugh! whoa, back up, 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 back up. Ugh! Ow, we both hit each other. Back up, back up, and, I don't want to be cornered, so I'm going to push him out like this. I'm going to step back, step back, step back. Okay, I'm going to move my character this way now. I want to reposition. There we go. Now we're going to go... There we go. Got him with a hit to the chest. Now, did I lose many hit points? I see my, I see two bars down here, but I don't know what they are. I think he was only able to get off glancing blows on my leather armor. Oh, I'm wearing chain underneath this. Okay. And yeah, actually, by the way, dear viewers, that matters. Like how hard they swing and how hard they hit you and things like that matter. Alright, so there's an axe here. I might be able to do something with that. Can I pick this up? E? I have to check the controls. Controls. Orbit, cursor look, switch equipped, interact in combat. Control? Okay. Inventory, I. Alright, so if I press I, opens up my inventory. I should be able to drag the axe in here, right? Alright, so I've got the axe now. Now, do I want the axe over the sword? Now, weapons don't necessarily have stats the way you would imagine that they do. The axe has a heavier head, so I want to make sure and hit them with the head of the axe with as hard a swing as possible. I think the sword will be easier to use at this point. What is this? I don't even know what this is. Is this my torch? No, it's not my torch. What is this? I don't know. I can't tell what that is. I'm sorry if it's obvious. Right-clicking a window will close it. But I've got this axe. Let me open it up. Let me try and equip it. Can I equip it? Okay, that swaps my sword out for the axe. Okay. So now I right click on this window to close it. Alright, so now I've got this axe, right? So let's go. I think I can probably deal more damage with this with the way I'm currently fighting. Alright, let's get out of combat mode because you kind of stagger around like that, doing short little side steps and stuff. You can more easily maneuver if you're. if you're not in combat mode. Because we got a table here. What's. what was in here? I, I can't move the table. I could probably move the chair. Is this a chest? It is a chest. Double clicking on it shows gloves. Alright, so I can right click on the gloves. No, that closes the window. Double clicking on the chest. Double click the gloves. Oh, cool. They do kind of have like sort of stats. They show you your coverage uh, and how well they protect you against slash and pierce and their encumbrance. A pair of worn leather gauntlets. Alright, so if I um, do this and drag it onto my character. Does that do anything? Nope, it just drags it into the world. Okay, so I have to open up my inventory. And I can drag the gloves here. Let's see what kind of gloves I'm currently wearing. They are better, because they've got better slash and better pierce. Okay, so maybe these weapons do have stats. Maybe I was incorrect. From what I read about the stuff, these things didn't have uh, your typical stats, like like 8 points of damage and 9 DPS or whatever, you know? Okay, so there's that. And let me double click the axe. Oh, I can double click the hatchet. Okay, so we can look at them side by side almost, or, you know, compare just like this. The sword has more slash damage. It's more balanced. And it's got some thrust damage. If I could actually get some thrust off, thrusts off with it. Alright, so it looks like the sword is better. But the hatchet weighs less. The sword is actually heavier. Okay. An old hatchet intended for chopping wood. Let me let me bring the sword back, because I might I might actually need that. And the gloves I was wearing were better. We saw that. And what is this? Let me double-click it to find out. 
Oh, it's a Proctor's Seal, a seal carried by Proctors representing the Law of Ardent. It can only be unlocked by turning the rings along its length in a particular combination known only to the Proctor who carries it. Okay, well, we're going to figure that out later, maybe. So that chest had some gloves, so that's pretty cool. So remember, double click to interact with certain things. So I can't interact with the table. And we've got a lot of tree logs and things in here at this point. Chopped wood. Oh, I can step right over that chest perhaps and move this aside. Maybe there's something over here. Move this over. Let's take a look this way. I don't think this is procedurally generated. I don't think so. I think this is a full-on actually designed area. I could be wrong. Alright, let's get this out of the way. Let's get this out of the way. Whoop. I said get this out of the way. Move it behind me. There we go. Alright. Ooh, let's not trip over stuff and let's get out of here. Alright, so this was down this hallway and I didn't get to see what was over here. We went to this room to the right, the first little hallway that we found, but there's also an offshoot this way and this appears to be a dead end. Okay, no, there's a door there. Yikes. Okay. Can I double click on any of these? No, I cannot. I can probably break some of this stuff, though. What if I try a harder swing? Alright, and notice how I try to get a harder swing off. Let me show you what I'm doing. Like, if I click and hold, that's a normal swing, right? But your character tries to swing wherever your cursor is. So what I do is I move my cursor over here to the left, and he's going to turn that way. Let me let me turn off combat mode. I'm going to move my car my cursor over here to the left, which is going to get him to try and swing his sword this way. And then, while he's trying to reach that direction, I'm going to move my cursor over to where I actually want to swing, which is over here. So he's going to bring his sword over here and then make a wider arc, which is a harder swing. Watch, we're going to do it this way. I'm going to go... See, that's a harder swing, and that'll that'll hit harder. So that's what I'm trying to do here, kind of. Okay, I can't break those. Okay, and I don't know how to thrust with this thing yet. But we can figure that out, I think. Okay, so that's fun. All right, let's open this door. Oh, it's locked. That door is locked. We can't go through there. And if I look like I'm fumbling around a lot with the controls, it's because, as you can see, this game is very different. But they make a point in telling you that eventually it becomes natural and it's very rewarding. And I love that kind of gameplay. Anything in this box? Nothing in this crate. Also locked. Okay, so it looks like the way we were going is the only way that we can currently go. That's good. And this way leads back to the uh, beginning. So we're going to move through here. We've already checked out that room. A little sewer area. Okay, so this door... Wow, it's bright in there. And this door actually opens too. Okay. Well, we're going to check this room first because it seems to be part of this hallway. And I just closed the door with my face. No problem. Okay, you don't want to open the doors too... You don't, open... don't want to open them too quickly because then they'll bounce off the wall. And kind of close a little. I guess you can. I guess it's fine. But if you open them slowly, you have more control over where they end up. Alright, so that's good. It's like a light globe. It's not like a window that's providing light. It's like some sort of a light globe. Oh, there's a baddie right there. I'm going to charge him. Let's, see, let's try this. Oof. Go for an overhead swing. Oh yeah, overhead swing. Okay, yeah, he's ba he's barely glancing his. I'm corner. He's barely glancing his blows against me, which is why I'm not losing hit points. I think. There's another character right there. A zombie. Pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. Move this way. Move this way. We're gonna go for a heavy swing. Oh yeah. Oh, I hit him with my arm though. Hit her. Or someone with long hair. It's a female character model. Oh, I'm almost I almost tripped on this log. Oh, I blocked! I blocked! Okay, so by holding my sword in that direction, I can block. Push, 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 push. Overhead swing! There we go. Oh man, I'm I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Okay, I'm gonna hold right click to reposition. There we go. And Okay, 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 okay. There we go. 
Whew. I lost a little bit of hit points there because I think I think I took a hit after I tripped on those boards. All right, let's get out of combat mode now so I can stop tripping all over everything that's on the ground. Crazy. All right, so can we loot? Can we loot corpses? Double click. Oh, we can. Oh, here comes comes another. I'm guessing these are the abducted villagers. That one didn't seem to mind at all when I was here. All right, what is this? Cloth trousers, pair of cloth trousers, cloth shirt. I don't really want any of this stuff. Thick leather boots. I think I'm carrying. I think as a proctor, I've got much better gear than what's here. This character doesn't seem to want to fight me. Can I talk to this character at all? Non-hostile, but I can't interact. Let me go settings, controls, and see if there's any kind of uh, talk feature. No, I guess not. All right, fine. Well, that character doesn't seem to want to fight, so I'm not going to fight. This area is pretty wide. This room is pretty wide. What have we got here? What's in this room? That could be of use to me. Anything at all. There's some stuff up there. A compass! Uh, yeah, I'll take it. Can I open up my inventory and then drag the compass in here? Oh, it adds a compass to my lower left of the screen there, just by having it on me. Cool, that ought to help a little. And uh, this. The contents of this bottle have long ago evaporated. Just a straight up bottle. And another one. And a dish that I can't bring with me. But the bottles I can probably bring in case I need to carry some sort of a liquid. Okay, so I'll bring them in there. can't double click on any of these boxes to open them. Got a basket there. Okay. Well, we found a compass in this room, and that is useful. So let's get going. Kind of useful. <laughs> and what's in this room? This is where that one non-hostile character was moving, moving around. There's a room here that's been completely ransacked, almost. Another bottle. We're going to leave that one. A chest. It's hard to differentiate the chest from, like, standard tables. Worn gambeson. Coverage. Worn padded cloth gambeson. I don't know what that is, word actually is. Alright, so let's take a look at the stats of my tunic compared to this thing. Impact, slash, crush, pierce, encumbrance, half... So this thing actually has much better coverage than my tunic does. So we're going to drag it in my inventory first. Or much better defense than my tunic does. So we're going to drag that in there. What is this? Did that, did that take off my velvet shirt? What happened? There's the gambeson. It goes underneath, so you can layer your armor. You can layer your armor. Okay. So we're going to put this thing on first. And then we don't need the velvet shirt because that's going to swap, right? Okay, yeah, that'll swap. And then we put the uh, the tunic over that. So there's my protection. We've got that gambeson and we've got this tunic over it. Um, wait, what is this? It's my chain shirt. We definitely want to have the chain shirt on. So we're going to put that on. There we go. Oh, this is my secondary loadout. We can have a secondary loadout. Interesting. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Found a little bit of protection there. I'm trying to rotate the camera in a favorable position. Here's something else. And what is the deal with this room? I can just hang those right back up. Kinda. Maybe not exactly the way I would want to. <laughs> okay, I'm just making a mess in here right now. Let's look around. 
on these shelves and such. Okay, we're going to pull back and we're going to move this way. There we go. This. Ooh, a hammer. A sledgehammer. A basic sledgehammer. Um, I don't know if I want that. I don't think I need these gloves anymore. So I'm just going to put these gloves right here. I hear somebody knocking stuff around over there. I think it's just that one. That one non-hostile. <clears throat> okay. Definitely want the compass, so we're gonna keep the compass on me. I don't think I'm gonna need this shirt anymore. I really don't think I'll need more than one bottle, maybe. You seem interested in what's going on in here, but you're not hostile. Okay, I don't I don't I don't need to kill this one, so I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna move this over here to the corner of my inventory. We're gonna keep the bottles here, because they don't take up too much room. And if I do need them, I don't wanna have it tossed it out right now and be like, well, I wish I hadn't done that. Alright, so let's take this sledgehammer. Put it on this side. Whoosh. Actually, we'll, we'll equip it. Oh, it's a two handed weapon. One. One. And overhead. There we go. So if I go... Oh, I could probably, like, really break some stuff down with this thing. Let's try. Nope, that's not the way to throw it. Or swing it. Maybe I can break some things. I can certainly knock things around. Alright, what's in here? Is there anything in here? I don't know. Now, how do I swap to my secondary controls? There's a swap somehow thing. Dash mode, inner, switch equipped, R. So R will bring me to my secondary loadout. Okay. So let's make the hammer my secondary loadout. And my primary will be sword. And, okay, we'll do this. And there we go. That's my primary. Now, so now if I, pre if I press R, we can go to the sledgehammer, right? Yes, and then R again brings me back to my torch and sword. Okay. Some other tools and things here. Alright, let's get this stuff out of my way. I'm kind of tripping, right? Click, drag. Oh, there must be a certain radius that I can interact with. Like, I, I can't just put things on the other side of the room because I'm not close enough to do that. But I can kind of sort of move things out of my way like this. There we go. Now. This looks like a ladder. I can't interact with that, though. Tongs. Don't think I'll need tongs, but there's a normal hammer. I don't think I'll need that, either. I'm gonna stick with my sword. Blunt weapons are awesome. But I like my sword. I didn't close that. I'm not closing that. Something else closed that. You don't want me in there? <laughs> but I want to get in there. I don't know if it's closing the door because it actually wants the door closed, or if it's just trying to get out and is ramming the door. <clears throat> Not a fan, huh? Okay. Ow! Okay. Stuck in this small room with this guy. Oh, he tripped me! Ooh. I need to block. I need to block. I need to block. There's a block. I need to block again. There we go. And then... Uh. Gotta block. Gotta block. Gotta block the attack. Block the attack. Block the attack. Block the attack. And then... Block the attack. And then swing. Block the attack. There's the block. And then swing. I'm stuck in the corner here. Swing! Oh no! I lost my sword. My arm is stuck back there. I'm still blocking though. Ah, he got me! You have been defeated. Wow, okay. This is just a restroom anyway. That's, okay, that's kind of humorous from the developer's part. You try and open the door to the restroom and the NPC inside closes it. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I was just unconscious. Oh, I've been defeated again. See, I've noticed that that bar is not completely filled up. My character might actually wake up at this point. 
Again. And then I've got to switch. I've got to get up. I've got to get up. But I've got to push him off me first. <laughs> He's spawn camping me. <laughs> That's actually kind of humorous from the developer's part. They have somebody in the bathroom, and you open the door, and they're like, Occupied. You open it. Occupied. You open it again. They're like, All right, man. <laughs> you want... You want to... Ow! Stop spawn camping me before I even get up. This dude is finishing me off. Eventually, I'm pretty sure that that red bar will fill up all the way, and then we'll have to respawn. Like, actually respawn. <laughs> Occupied! No, <laughs> Occupied! He just hit me in the back! You have died. Okay, so there's you have been defeated and you have died. Okay, well that was... That was a real jerk move on that guy's part. Come on, dude. I know you were in the restroom, but I'm just trying to explore this place. I'm new to the game. You're not new. You're part of it. You don't gotta spawn camp me, alright? <laughs> I am so delighted at how fun this game is. Did you see how I was intentionally blocking attacks? There is no, like, block key. There's no block button. I wasn't holding a button to block. I was using my mouse to hold my sword in the direction of incoming attacks and that is how you block attacks I was doing that earlier in the video and I was doing that just now um, the game also makes a point to tell you that all NPCs whether they're hostile or not I, this game just calls them NPCs because not everybody is out to to kill you in this game obviously I could have simply left that NPC alone and I would have been just fine for example um, but this game makes a point to tell you that all NPCs in the game, they have, uh, they are subject to the same rules as the player characters are. And some of them are better at combat than others are. So obviously, we encountered somebody, we encountered a character, we encountered an NPC, uh, who was better at combat than the NPCs we had been fighting. And that was portrayed through uh, stronger swings better timed attacks and things like that and so we had to get better as a result I had to I had to really use my blocking and then wait for a blocked attack before I actually made my attack as well and then while attacking I had to try and make sure and make it in the best way possible but this was really cool this was really fun I'm looking forward to doing more of this game look doing looking forward to doing more of a playthrough of this game I hope you folks enjoyed this look forward to the uh, upcoming Xanima videos because I'm looking forward to making more of them thanks a lot for watching dear viewers and I will see you folks next time <laughs>